Basically, when I started writing for two and a half years, I've been watching Supercross DVDs and national DVDs. 21st Seven was about motocross, so I realized this is gonna be my goal. I think if there's one thing that got me through everything, it was just hoping that one day I was gonna be a racer and a professional one. Sitting in class, thinking about it, running on the road, thinking about it. It didn't matter how far behind I was at that moment from everybody else, just hoped. From a small village in eastern Germany and a small town in Minnesota, respectively, Ken Roxon and Ryan Dungey share the dream of dominating the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship. But that is where their similarities seem to end. Roxon has aligned himself with the most counterculture race team in the industry, Dungey with the most clean cut. Ken is known as the most naturally talented rider in the world. Dungey has the hardest working. For Ken, the greatest virtue is confidence. For Ryan, it is humility. As a rider, I'm undercover. I don't like to be flashy. You know, I want to be humble. I don't really want to be out there being that cocky guy. I'm out there to get the job done. I honestly just don't give a f what haters, what they say. I know what I can do, and I have faith in myself, and it's going to be hard for people to beat me. I try to throw a little bit of attitude in there. If you win a championship and you throw that attitude in there, and that was before the championship was won, so much better. I don't think we need to worry about straights. I don't think the speed's going to be there. I think we just need to get it rideable. He just said he can't turn. He's going so slow. We've got to make him turn. I want to see you stressed out about someone else that doesn't even belong in the zip code. Distance yourself, be smart on the track, get yourself positioned right and focus on you. Hangtown Raceway near Sacramento, California has been a stop on the National Motocross Series for the past 47 years and would serve as the location of round one in 2015. Dungey came into Hangtown fresh off the best Supercross season of his career and Roxon as the defending outdoor motocross champion. But neither rider would present any challenge to an on-point Eli Tomac. Eli Tomac, this is a dominant performance. A minute, 11 second lead over Dungey. We're gonna be checking the record books. This might be one of the most dominant wins we've ever seen in the 450 class. So bad, okay? So bad. Really? Yeah. Oh, we'll work on it, we'll work on it. You know, we're gonna work on a little bit of testing. You know, that second moto, we made some changes, just wasn't, uh, wasn't there. You know, I can reassure you that, you know, we have a lot more than that to give. Perhaps the most significant source of conflict between Dungey and his race team is Ryan's tendency to criticize the suspension settings on his machine whenever his results are poor. It is a habit that his new trainer, Alden Baker, has been actively trying to change. I was just amazed at how much he didn't let go of areas. You know, he would overthink things. Hey, that's the bike you've got. Stop trying to mess with it. I started to see these habits that are, hey, uh-uh. Well, you've got to find something that you can race and be consistent on. Yeah. yeah. Without reinventing the wheel and panicking and all that. Ken Roxon's situation proved to be much worse than Dungey's at Hangtown. With a stress fracture in his back, he rode to 19th and 5th place finishes. Feeling of disbelief. It's hard to accept what's happened. Supercross season started out so well, and then it all fell apart. Ken and the team and everybody's put all their focus now into outdoors and to defend the number one plate. And now something like this happens, they're like, man, how many more things have to go wrong before we start getting things going our way? The biggest change in Roxon's preparation in 2015 was his decision to leave Alden Baker's training program, choosing to work with his father as well as medical personnel at Red Bull instead. Ken's decision was fueled by the strict diet, small amount of vacation, and overall amount of work Baker demands of his athletes. I was done feeling the way I was feeling. I was completely finished last year, in the end of the season. He told me to take two to three weeks off, and then we're gonna start again. I'm like, absolutely not. I can't, there's no way. Two to three weeks is not enough for me to be ready for the whole thing over again. I'm only 20, if I would've kept going that way, I don't see myself riding in two years. I encourage him to go have a good time. I mean, at the end of the day, he's a 20-year-old kid who probably didn't go to high school dances and didn't have his friends on the weekends and has been a professional athlete since he was 15 years old. He's got to go enjoy himself. If the kid's going to face burnout, then what's the point? So if I had a choice of a rider having a long career, 
no real chance of burnout or a shorter career, winning championships and then retiring early. To me, it's not even debatable. It's winning championships. Do I need fun? I definitely need fun because otherwise I don't go good. I go to the track happy and I go fast and I have confidence and that in my eyes is easier earned money than having everything straight business. I want to have more fun and who doesn't? I sat back and I honestly didn't have an answer for that. My only concern with that is these teams pay you a lot of money. I believe there's no fun when, you, when you're not doing well or you're sitting on the sidelines and you're not producing the goods. Roxon and Baker parted ways on January 20th, 2015 during the Supercross season, and Alden immediately began working with Dungey full time. Whether it was by coincidence or cause and effect, Ken's Supercross season began to fall apart four days later in Oakland, and Ryan dominated the rest of the year. While Roxon has all the talent to be an anomaly, 11 out of the last 15 Supercross champions and 10 out of the last 14 motocross champions were trained by Baker. Kenny is going to be very good with or without Aldon. Is he going to be as good as he could be? Maybe not. Hopefully not. <laughs> For the past four years, Dungey has had to watch Baker win six championships with Ryan Villapoto knowing that the only reason Villapoto and Alden were able to join forces was because Dungey first turned down his opportunity to work with the accomplished trainer. Brian, yeah. why did you go a different direction? Okay, I didn't know if you wanted me to say that. <laughs> he met with Alden and there was the opportunity to work together, but once money kind of came into play, I think Ryan was being a little tight with it and didn't want to spend that much. He had just won that year. When you're winning, you don't really think you need any more help. And I don't blame him. I think also there was people that gave him advice that, dude, you're doing plenty good. You just won a series. What do you need him for? And it's standard. We're all human. We only look when we're in trouble. These last four years, he's always seen the little edge that Villo's had on him. Man, I want to get to that level, that little bit I need. I've wanted that for so long. I'll never complain. I hear other riders complaining about, oh, we gotta do this. I'm like, that's it. I've put in days longer than me and Eldon put in now for years. The biggest change was I trusted him with my training, my riding. I didn't have to focus on what am I gonna do Monday? What am I gonna do Tuesday? And I didn't second guess it at all because he's got 12, 13 plus years with top professional athletes. I don't think Ryan needs a trainer to make him get out of bed. He has the drive and the motivation, but he does need Alden in the sense of organization because Ryan is the kind of person who will work, work, work until he runs himself into the ground. I think it just brings confidence to Ryan to have Alden in his corner. It was the missing piece. Beautiful, my man. Really, really nice. Nice speed through this turn. After spending a week adjusting their machines and training, Dungey and Roxon arrived at Glen Helen Raceway for round two of the motocross series, hoping to have made some progress on Tomac. But Eli would once again claim both motos in convincing fashion. Eli Tomac dominates Hangtown, dominates Glen Helen. Huge win for Eli Tomac. Eli was going fast. They had things dialed in, his bike was good. Obviously he's a fit guy. We were definitely playing catch up, but we were making progress. That was a kick in the rear where, hey, you know what? We need to get better, we can be better, and we better get on it quickly. By the time we got to Colorado, made some more steps, we were getting closer, but Eli was still another second. We were still off. Tomac has just looked so comfortable all season. He's five for five, looking for six for six, and then, oh! oh! Tomac! And down! It's going for the motorcycle, but he's not! Tomac is holding his wrist oh or his left gosh. side. I cannot believe this. Tomac's crash in Moto2 at Colorado resulted in a dislocated shoulder and torn rotator cuff. Roxon inherited the lead until late in the race when he made a mistake of his own. Dungey capitalized and took the championship points lead. Ryan Dungey, as he has done so many times, is going to be the benefactor of everyone else's mistakes. Ryan Dungey wins here in Colorado. A lot of people say that Ryan is the so-called diesel. He just cruises along. You know, I have to say that that's pretty wrong. Could he be a lot faster? Probably. 
but it'd be a lot more on that edge of that 50-50 and going down and hurting yourself. You've got to remember the goals in the sport is to stay healthy. The team pays you for championships. Yes, wins are good and that's fantastic, but the goals are championships. I think I get a lot of flack for like, if Eli was back, you wouldn't have won, but at the same time, it's like, you can go fast. You can go balls to the wall and set times faster than everybody else, multiple laps in a row, but how long are you gonna get away with riding on the edge that you can't even handle or control? We were a little bit off, but it's not the fastest guy who wins. A lot of people just don't understand. Next time on MX Nation, Ryan Dungey and Ken Roxon move their midweek preparation to the humidity of Florida, with Dungey working at the recently constructed Baker's factory and Roxon opting to rehearse his motos at the nest. Then at Muddy Creek and High Point Raceway, Ryan and Ken will solidify their roles as the lead contenders for the motocross title.